Hi. In the last video, I told you that I'm going to build a leg with the cheap servos to do some tests. Well, I did it. But before showing you the results, let me tell you about the setup that I have here. The three servos on the leg are connected to this Pololu 6-channel servo controller, which is the smaller version of the 18-channel one that I use in my other hexapod. The servo controller board is connected to the main phone with a USB cable, and there is a second phone that I will use as a remote. But this is how the entire thing works really. We just need a bigger board and 5 more legs. But as you can see, the leg movements aren't smooth at all. It seems the servos are constantly overshooting. Also it got worse over time and is happening on 2 servos out of the 4. So it seems like these servos are not gonna work and I have to keep looking for other cheap servos to try in the future. But my attempt to make a cheaper hexapod wasn't a total failure either. For example, all the servos in the new design are supported from both sides, which is something I also want to do on my main hexapod. I printed this small piece that fits tightly onto the back of the servo and adds a hole on the back that I can use for a pivot joint. It doesn't cover the screws on the back, so you can permanently glue it to the servo. I use it on all the joints and it seems to be working pretty well. So I printed new parts for my main hexapod with the same ideas. And I really like the results. I swapped the parts on one of the legs to show you. I printed a new femur and a new coxa. But I'm going to keep the entire old tibia. Especially I like the new femur, which supports both servos from both sides and has a bar in the middle to connect the sides together. But I was able to keep the same range of movement. I also switched to use the circular forms, because it makes the calibration process a lot easier. For example here the connection to the femur servo has a 35 degree angle, but you don't need to remove the horn after calibration, and the 35 degree rotation is applied to the holes on the part itself. I simply couldn't do that with the aluminum board. These are all the parts that you need for building one leg, which you can download from the link in the description. Here I've put them on the table on the same side that each part was printed on, on the printer bed. Most of the parts are mirrored for the left and right legs, so make sure to print the right number of each part and use the correct parts for each side. Make sure to clean up any imperfections, especially on the pivot part where the two parts will touch each other. Finally, we are ready to assemble the leg. Let's start with the touch sensor on the tip of the leg. The touch sensor has three small printable pieces and has a 2x22mm steel shaft that goes up and down and triggers a micro switch. Make sure that the shaft has a small play and isn't too tight. Then slide the micro switch upside down in its place, as you see here. Make sure that the switch is getting triggered without any restriction. Then you can attach the whole touch sensor unit to the tibia. I use this 8mm flexible rubber cap for the tip of the leg to give it a little more grip on the smooth surfaces. I'm going to swap in these parts to show you the process. I already calibrated the servos and centered all three on 1500. The first step is to glue in the three back pieces. Then install the coxa. You don't need to remove the horn to install any of the parts, which is important for calibration. When installing femur, follow the holes on the part and on the horns to find the correct angle. Attach the tibia on the right angle. I also wired up the touch sensor. 
The final part is the shield, which is just for looks, and this one is in wrong color, but looks cool and is necessary. The two front legs are done, and everything should work as usual because we didn't change any of the dimensions. I'm really happy with how these parts turned out to be. I also printed a new frame, which is 2 cm narrower and 2 cm longer. I think since both the phone and the battery are rectangular, it makes more sense for the frame to be similar shape too. I can't wait to print the other four legs and put them on this new frame. I will also show you what's exactly inside the robot, but that is for another video. Thank you for watching.